everyone and welcome to Enza Podcast. Here at Enza Podcast, we strive to inspire everyone to choose the food that brings the food, as well as to dive into the nutrition and diabetes community to know more about it. I'm your host for today, Silver Ho, a nutrition alumni from IU. With us today are our fellow podcast members, Tay and Yvonne, both of whom are IU diabetic students. Hi, hi guys. Hello. Okay. Hi and welcome to today's episode where we will discuss more about the MBTI and career pathway. So what is MBTI? MBTI is the Myers-Briggs Indicator. It is a personality test which is also known as the 16 type personality test. MBTI type descriptions characterize 16 types of personalities at their best, which not only provide positive self-affirming goals, but also remind us of our blind spots and problems to avoid. MBTI type table also provide ways for looking at occupation attractive to each of the 16 psychological types. Which is why today we will be discussing if our MBTI type really suits our career pathway as fellow MBT students. It's Pei here and yes, the MBTI is a popular personality test and not just in the professional industry but around the world. And the Maya Briggs Indicator MBTI is developed by Isabel Briggs Mayers and Catherine Briggs who they took C.G. Jones psychological types and incorporated this into an understandable test format accessible to interested individuals and the test combines one quality in each personality dichotomy, introverted versus extroverted, sensing versus intuition and so on. So which will help you see the way a person or a job candidate may possibly react in a given scenario or describe the way they behave with peers. So first thing first, let's dive into what does all the letters mean. So basically, there are four dichotomy of the MBTI. First of all, is the orientations of energy. It is extraversion or introversion stands for E and I. And the next one is process of perception. So it's sensing or intuition. So it's S or N. And then for the process of judging, it's thinking or feeling, T or F. And then the last one is attitude towards dealing with the outside world. So it's whether judging or perceiving. So we will put the table here. You can take a pause if you want to see the explanation here. Okay. Okay, thank you, Yvonne. So before we start, it's only fair to, for us to reveal our MBTI type and uh, analyze from within. Well, I've previously heard a few of my friends commented how the types changes from time to time, but no matter how many times that I've done it, uh, which I think I've done it more than five times, it doesn't change at all. So previously when I was applying for this job on uh, Job Street, they were actually asking for my MBTI type and that was the last time when I did it again. Uh, so I'm always an IMJT, the advocate. And this type actually value equality, which is true. I don't find myself voicing out for inequalities at times. Uh, it might be because of my trait or because uh, I'm just simply introverted. I actually do find myself very secretive when it comes to my personal life. And it is also a common trait of uh, INFJ as well. Being reluctant to open up to others, despite being someone who wants to really uh, have the deeper connection with others. So how about yours, Peggy? Well, I'm an ENFJ T type and it's the protagonist type. It is said that this type of personality likes to strive to have a positive impact on other people and what surrounds them. And they also enjoy helping people because they get a sense of joy and fulfillment and they like to grab onto opportunities to do the right thing, even if it's not easy uh, to accomplish them. Um, this is not what I'm saying myself. It's from an article. So I kind of agree in some ways because I feel great after having a good catch up with my friends, a smooth conversation with friends or colleagues. And then in terms of uh, my work ethic and my mentality, I always think that opportunities to learn are rare and precious. So I always grab onto opportunities given by anyone else. And I do think I never think about the consequences, even though I will get stressed along the way. But anyways, it's indeed an amazing experience and a fulfilling one. Mm. Oh, okay, mine, um, it's same with Peggy. I'm ENFJ, 
But whether it's T or A, I'm quite in the middle. So it's sometimes A, sometimes T. And I totally agree what Pei had said just now, actually. It sounds so like me. And yeah, I'm the, always the cheerful person among people. I like to help others. I grab all the chances if I get one. And yeah, there's one typical weakness that I would definitely agree. It's overly empathetic. Even though it's not my problem or maybe uh, the problem is the person who have hurt me before, I still want to help the person out. Even I am get into trouble and I get very happy if I help the person out. And well, because of this, I actually got scolded many times and they say I, I'll get bullied easily. La. <laughs> okay, so uh, I've heard several the side stories of y'all and I feel pretty relatable. Okay, moving on, speaking about strength and weaknesses, uh, which Yvonne actually covered quite a bit. As we mentioned previously, right, the MBTI also briefed us about our strength and weaknesses for us to look out for any blind spots or problems for us to avoid in the future. So would you like to share some of the strengths and weaknesses that you find is really relatable or worth highlighting for the audience or our viewers? P, would you like to start first? As Yvonne mentioned before, right, as an ENFJ, we are very people-oriented. So we want to avoid any conflicts between people as much as possible. And I do think I am also a people-pleaser at times, which I don't really like this trait of mine but because of these traits I have which is I'm also quite straightforward and I'm willing to voice out what's right and what's wrong so I have to really counterbalance my personality and make it under control in some way anyhow you know I do believe that what's a strength can also be a weakness a weakness can also be a strength so it's vice versa and we just need to be more understanding in ourselves, acknowledge the fact and just be more aware of it. And we will be okay. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah, true. And if you take a look at 16 personalities about ENFJ, right? Our weaknesses are somehow something that's us creating burden to ourselves, like unrealistic, overly idealistic, intense, like... What P and I had just said, we always set high expectations and stress a lot on ourselves. So sometimes I'm just too hard on myself or I like to get myself into trouble, which makes me look like a troublemaker in my life. Well, luckily, our strength, I think it's like, it, they are compliments, like passionate and altruistic. Yeah, I think that's why uh, I never stopped chasing something that I dreamt for. Like what Pei had just said just now, like strength equal. It can be weaknesses. Weaknesses can be strength. It's like how we balance it out. And I do agree time and experience will change a person. And yeah, all these years, I learned to let go a lot of things that is unnecessary. Yeah. Wow. I actually can't believe as a fellow NFJ, right? I feel very relatable with both of you, Piggy and Timo, especially about the people-pleaser part. I don't know if it's because that I'm more towards the introverted side. I actually tend to avoid conflicts, which is why I'm always too weak to say no to other people's requests. That in turn actually made me kind of become someone that is sort of like a people pleaser like what Pei say and it definitely made me prone to burn out because I have to care about other people's feelings also and actually that makes me very exhausted at times because I try to adjust according to others well but I guess my weakness is also part of my strength like what you all say so it acts like a double-edged sword. Lah. So like what Eva mentioned previously, right? As an IFJ, I like to really also help others out, like extend my helping hand to others, which is a good thing, I think. But I just need to balance out like what Pei say. So like uh, in case I'm being too, uh, you know, I help out in uh, a lot of different situations. Like Eva would think I'm a bit capable. So I really need to balance out uh, between being too capable of being too helpful. Yeah, I need to balance that up. Now that we've discussed more about strength and weaknesses, 
how about we discuss more about differences between extroverts and introverts? Since um, we have here two extroverts and me, one <laughs> introvert, maybe we can do a really casual discussion about the differences between extroverts and introverts when handling different kind of situations. Uh, how about we start from throwing a situation to pay you first? <laughs> like handling this kind of situation as an extrovert, how do you respond to you know spontaneous situation? Yeah, a spontaneous situation. Like very unexpected one. How would you handle it as an extrovert? Well, before I answer that, I come across an article about my type, ENFJ T type. Actually, it's the most reserved uh, extroverts. And I do agree in some way based on myself because I find myself that I have uh, a very extrovert personality. I reach out to people first, but I'm actually quite enjoy being myself alone and just stay at home and, you know, just spend time alone. So in spontaneous events, I would say I have to mentally prepare myself first. Okay, I was just saying, I just observe that person uh, because I'll run a witch out to her. Mom. So I have to uh, think how should I reach out to that person. Then I only reach out to her as a very extrovert type. So I have to be prepared my, by myself, my mind mentally. Yeah, that's how I would treat a very spontaneous event. Mm. How about Yvonne? <laughs> um, me, myself? Yeah, I'm more to like Peggy. I, I try to look very calm and extrovert at the outside. But inside here, I'm like, pow, 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 pow. I'm very scared, you know. I don't know what to say. I'm like, bluffing, blah, 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 blah. Just keep on talking to that person. Yeah. But yeah, it's extrovert type too. La. Because I don't know how introvert things, because there are some of my friends are really, really introvert. They show the traits of it. And they tend to like, oh, don't want la, don't want la, like that. And then they push the extrovert extroverts out. So I don't know how Sylvia will handle it. Uh, it's very interesting because yeah, some of the introvert friends, they tend to make them themselves very calm. Yeah, I'm extrovert. I'll just go. I'll just go. Yeah, I don't know which kind of introvert Sylvia is. For me, like what Peggy would be la, actually pretty much like what Peggy because NFJ types are the type that like to plan things up really carefully step by step. Yeah, for me, I actually don't really like spontaneous events, but a matter of fact, unforeseen circumstances or spontaneous events actually happen almost every day in our life, just that the way that we handle things wrong. Uh, but for me, I will analyze this yeah, and I see how I can handle it. And also depending on the situation, like I need to think through it, whether I'm handling with a lot of people or just a small group of people. Of course, uh, when handling with a, a, a big group of people with uh, spontaneous events, right, uh, I have to really two-way communication with a lot of people, which really drains my energy, but so happen that I like to initiate conversation first. So uh, in that kind of way, I'm not really introverted. But in other sense, when I'm handling with a lot of people, I need to analyze a lot. So it drains my brain power, my brain juice, my energy away. So I need a um, longer period of time to recover at home, you know, just scroll through the phone, read books, or, you know, just watch YouTube videos. So I guess uh, it also kind of predict the way we handle different situations, like extrovert enjoy being around people and they find energy when they socialize with other people, while introvert actually find this kind of events very draining for themselves and they prefer to stay alone and do their hobbies alone. However, I do think that no matter you are extroverted or introverted, it doesn't necessarily affect your leadership skills. And I think that um, in the future career pathway, leadership skills is one of the interpersonal skills that is on demand. So uh, I will take my own experience as an example here, being a fellow introvert. I've seen that in group projects, there are times when extroverts are not being proactive enough in taking on uh, the leadership role. And that's a good opportunity for the introverts to, you know, step up and take on these leadership roles to, you know, just train themselves to be 
more adaptable and sociable like uh, what extroverts can do. Overall, I just want to say that like uh, me and Yvonne is like, in another words, fake it to make it that kind of person, right? Fake it to make it, yeah. So in inside, I was like struggling. I was like, oh my God, does this person like me or not? Like, am I, am I embarrassing myself? And then I was like very calm and whoa, confidence kind of girl in front of you. But actually, no. <laughs> Aside from extrovert and extrovert, right? I think um, we are both in general NFJ, right? NFJ. We are quite pathetic to the people around us and these traits can be helpful in our career as a dietitian or nutritionist and we will be able to empathize the struggles of our prospective uh, patients and clients hopefully we'll be able to uh, guide them and help them with the most comfortable or a personalized treatment for them and yeah they will work towards their health goals i think that's quite helpful you know our personality for our career um, prospects yeah Okay, so since our main focus is career pathway and MBTI, let's steer a bit back to our main topic of the day. So before we review some types that we find suitable for the MBT career pathway, uh, as a counsellor, uh, healthcare field in general, let us discuss a bit about our career aspirations since we have uh, MBT students here, right? Uh, me as a nutrition alumni and PE and even being a dietetic student. PE, would you like to start first? Um, okay, so in episode zero, yeah, if you haven't checked it out, just check it out now. I answered my favorite subject is MNT, Medical Nutrition Therapy. So, but anyways, uh, I'm just very curious to work in a hospital, but I don't think I would work there for long as my um, long-term goal in life is to build my own career and to be an entrepreneur, if you may say so. So this is a little bit TMI. But yeah, definitely, uh, I wish to have to be a food-related business that I want to build. Yeah, that's all for me. <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah, well, mine is still kind of blurry. Yeah, because I, I'm going to start my year too soon. Uh, at like same for la. And But I'll probably go for clinical settings to train myself first before I start off with what I really like. So actually, according to my personalities, I feel like I'm more a community person and I like to socialize with people, educate people, talking in front of people or maybe camps. So media could be a choice for me, but I'm not sure. And perhaps if able, I wish to own my uh, own a business like Peggy. But yeah. <laughs> thinking of it yet. Sylvia, you want to share yours as yeah. an antique? Yeah, for mm -hmm. me, I would like to become a counsellor in the future, whether it's a nutrition counsellor or counsellor in general, to sort of like help them to prevent from getting diseases and educate them in general. And I do find that uh, very interesting because apparently uh, my MBTI, INFJ, is also on the list, which we will share later, okay? Yeah, um, I think, I don't know how you guys think that. Because previously, I, when I decide my own tertiary education, I actually referred to MBTI report to choose what I want. Because it's like a guidance for me. Because, yeah, I don't know where to go. I love this, I love that. So I decided to use something to let me to refer. So looking at the MBTI report, do you think that it provides any construct? constructive feedback for you to work on like whether towards a better person or focus in your career yeah yeah it's interesting to see how the mbti test provides us some guidance on how we act that we didn't know initially so that's what's so charming about it which also links to what we will be discussing next so we will move on and dive into what other MBTI types that are suitable in our NDT career. So we have done some research and we categorize a few career pathway that matches the DNT field, which includes the academia field. Uh, for example, being a lecturer, if you want, counselor, like what uh, Silva mentioned, the, a general healthcare settling or a self-starter, like to be an entrepreneur. 
and we will discuss about more the common uh, cognitive functions that we have observed in the following types. So, Silva? Okay, so now I will first share about our uh, lecturer type. So, based on our own research, we will find that uh, ENFJ, ESFJ, and INTJ are the ones that are most suitable to be the lecturer, so in the academia field. Uh, Pei, would you like to share counsellor field next? All right, um, so we have looked through it's INFJ, ENFJ, ENFP and INFP that is more, more interested in being a counselor. And then self startups like ESTP and ENTJ, they are more commonly to become a self startup. How about Yvonne? Share some about the healthcare area in general. Okay, so the healthcare area it's ISFJ, ESFP. ISFP and ESFJ, which interestingly, we're not inside here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. But at least it's a guidance, right? Yeah, it's yeah. just a guidance. But at least we're on the list of the counsellor, right? Like all of us. Are on the list. I mean, the, the ultimate goal is to help other people, right? So I, I do think that in some way, it provides us like a guidance on our future career pathway, but uh, it, it doesn't necessarily we need to follow what they are suggesting us to do, right? So yeah, what we constantly uh, observe or the least is like, uh, especially the counselor job function is the diplomats, which is the green color. So MBTI, there's four colors in general. So there's green color, the yellow color, the purple color, and the blue color. So under this green color diplomats, right? We have on the list is actually based on the counselor job function that Peyi previously mentioned. The INFJ, the ENFJ, the ENFP, and INFP. So these four are actually uh, categorized under diplomats. And what makes them so special that all of them are actually on the list of the counselor. So what key characteristic make them a suitable candidate for counselor? Let us find out more. So the diplomats, which are the intuitive and feeling dominant, which is N and F, they care about helping and connecting with others. We have really heard about Yvonne and P talking about how they are being empathetic and also just helping out with the rest. Because they have such strong sense of empathy, they would rather cooperate and compete. I would also like to take myself as an example here. So for me, uh, being an IFJ, I tend to avoid conflicts. This statement is actually quite true. Uh, they would rather cooperate than compete. So I would rather cooperate with others and find a common solutions together. Just avoid the conflicts. I don't like war. I love peace. <laughs> yeah, that's sort of mindset and uh, these types the diplomats uh, aim to understand themselves and the others they often have deep insights uh, into human nature and they can use these insights to influence the people around them fortunately diplomat personality types tend to do this with care this is a good start point you know for us especially in a NDT field um, helping out with patients we handle patients with care <laughs> Yeah, and they are sensitive to other people's feelings, which is also good. And they want to you know, nudge the people around them in positive directions, uh, which makes them a great counselors. Additionally, here are some other key characteristics of the diplomats for your references, which are firstly, longing for connections. We, we love to connect with others around us. And then second one, we strive for a positive change. And the third one, we are always longing for a higher purpose of life. And also, we have this strong sense uh, and need to belong. Okay, moving on. If, would you like to share the second one on the list? Okay, so second on the list are the explorers, the yellow color one. And they are um, observant and prospecting dominant. Three of them are on the list, actually. It's ESTP. ESFP and ISFP. So the ESFTP is the entrepreneur, was found to be a suitable candidate to be a self-starter. And the next two is ESFP and ISFP are in the healthcare setting. 
So the explorers, as the name, they are types that are highly adaptable to almost any setting, and they don't mind handling any uncertainties. They are types that are well known for being adaptable and flexible. According to the 16 personalities, 76% of the explorers prefer to work in a team compared to working alone, which makes them a perfect candidate in the healthcare setting. For example, a hospital or a clinic. And because of this, usually the place where it involves a team of people from different um, disciplinary. Additionally, here are some key characteristics of the explorers for reference, which are first one, living for change. Secondly, social ingenuity. The last one is the power of risk. So yeah, let's move on to the, the next one. Pei, would you like to share about it? Yep. So the third common one on our list is sentinels and also analysts. On they are on a tie with two on the list respectively, which we have. They are mostly STJ or FJ for sentinels and NTJ for the analysts. So in the sentinels, they are usually observant and judging dominant, while the analysts are intuitive and thinking dominant. So here are some of the key characteristics of each type respectively. So in Sentinels, we can see that they have a strong character and they are very competent. So they have very good working attitude and they also work in the steady progress. And then they have a very good guidance and wisdom in themselves as also their peers. And overall, they are they like to plan ahead and have uh, with good due diligence. As for the analysts, they are intuitive and thinking driven. They're usually the INTJ and ENTJ. And they think a lot and they are very driven, curiosity driven. And they are socially selective, meaning they, they enjoy spending time alone and they are not bored of themselves. And then they have independent minds. We are approaching to the end. And I'm sure now we have a brief concept on what the MTI is and how it may potentially help us in building a better self. May I ask the opinion of both of you if MBTI really reflects on your personality well since we have ENFJs and INFJs here? Yeah, I feel very relatable. Like NFJ actually shares a lot of um, similarities. But for the E and I, right, through this meeting, you actually cannot feel like Sylvia is a person which have an I personality. Like when introvert type of person, they go through some experience and time. And when they have to speak out, they won't have that trait. Like my friends also. For information, if you haven't watched EP1, it's about Leonard. Leonard is INTJ. I don't think you'll feel like he's I through the whole meeting. He's like all the way talking, 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 very socialized. Yeah, so don't let the, the task frames you. It doesn't mean anything to you. Sometimes, yeah, it's the experience and time you need to change to a person you wanted to be. Yeah. I did listen to the EP1 podcast. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, actually, INTJ is also on our list, you know, um, architect as a lecturer. So that explains why he's talkative in a sense. But uh, I, I mean, it's a good way, right, to, you know, voice out for our opinions. Because at the end of the day, you are living for yourself, right? And when you find opportunity to voice out, it, it is definitely suitable at the right situation, appropriate situation to really voice out. So I do think that what Yvonne said is true about um, having experience and then also having their own opinions and then uh, they voice out. And it may be because of the percentage of extrovert and introvert also. So that, uh, if you are not familiar with MBTI, actually they have this percentage of uh, extrovert and introvert. So uh, obviously, as the name suggests, if you are I first, your I will of course be higher than your E. And if you are extrovert, your E will of course be higher than your I. La. But there are situations where the E and I is up to par. So that might explain why 
uh, some introverts are actually more extroverts. Oh, well, I think my MBTI is actually a good thing, a good tool that you can refer when you want to understand yourself more or you can't decide something. But it really doesn't mean um, 100% true for you. So uh, you, you kind of share some traits of the MBTI you've got and the experience might change um, your personalities as well. So uh, for those who feel like not very accurate, right? You just have to do the test, um, like honest to yourself and don't be biased with the choices. I'm sure you get an MBTI type that really relatable to you. So yeah, thank you to the one who created MBTI because it helped me to see my weaknesses and how I can use my strength so I can improve myself more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually do think that like what Yvonne said, you have to really be true to yourself because the MBTI results, right? Uh, if we are not true to ourselves or to the test at least, it will not help us to, you know, interpret the results accurately. Some of the job firms actually require us to undergo this kind of MBTI test. And that's when some people actually think that, oh, I should answer more this way or that way so that my results will turn out better like for example if an introverted uh, go through mbti test right they would choose answer that does not reflect on their self to show more of the extroverted side and that is obviously not a correct way to you know get to know yourself truly just for a job i mean yeah la, you for a job but not good for yourself la, i would say and i also do think that uh through this mbti it certainly made me uh, understand myself more deeply especially on my strengths and weaknesses, which I can further work on. Though so INFJ are more prone to burnout, uh, it is also on the list of the 16 type personality test report. And I'm now very much aware of it now. And I try to keep a balance between work and life. And I have this very strict principle of not answering any notifications, um, text messages after 11 p.m. Well, except for a few sudden emergency situations, I would say. Yeah. How about you, Pei? Well, uh, thank you for Siva for sharing such your own experience. And in my opinion, yes, MBTI is just a very brief guide to help us leading a better life, a career prospect, a better relationship with your loved ones. So definitely take it cool, everyone. Treat it as a fun and interesting test. That's all. Hmm. Just because they tell you so and so, you are this so and so, just don't constrict yourself with those. You know, we can always change it, you know, long time and experience. Yep. I think that's all about it, right? Wow, this is a really nice um discussion here. Yeah, especially like um, this kind of exploration about um, our traits and personalities. Uh, this kind of deep conversation, I really enjoy. Being an INFJ, I really enjoy this kind of you know, deep conversations, get to know more about uh, different, different type of people. Yeah, okay. So, uh, well, that sums up our sharing session. I hope, I sure do hope you enjoy and learn something new through our podcast. Well, it is good to get to know yourself more through the MBTI test. Uh, like what Peggy and Von say, please do follow your heart and your dream and do not ever let the test result lead you to um, your future career pathway. So uh, it is meant for you to learn more about your strengths and weaknesses so that you understand more about yourself and you can work on and improve from within. And it is just a mere suggestion. I do feel that no matter what the sites comment about your future career pathway, always do what you are passionate about. Remember, the MBTI is designed to indicate preferences, not competencies. At the end of the day, employers are looking out for different sets of personalities to build a working environment filled with a team of dynamic individuals that complement each other's strengths and weaknesses. Sound interesting, right? So how do I really find out what my MBTI is? You can know more about it through the website. 16 personalities. personalities. Okay. Thank you so much for tuning in to our podcast. We hope that this episode has impacted our listeners and brought about insights to the nutrition and diabetics field. 
This is Inja Podcast, inspiring everyone to choose the food that brings the good. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed this session.